Now, let's go to one other major headline. The seat of government uh, has come up to say that they cannot find over 200 vehicles. Actually, more than that, because the information they got from the outgoing or outgoing government, the NDC administration, indicated that they were expecting a certain number of vehicles. And then what they met and have counted is way less than what was expected. And we want to leave all the brouhaha, the discussion and the debate and look at what goes directly into the, um, the audit process and what should be expected. What is the globally accepted standard? And f before we come in studio to speak to uh, an expert with regard to internal audit, let's find out exactly what the uh, Administrator General has been saying with regard to even resources that he has and uses. For office space problem, we needed almost 12 to 15 people. Mm -hmm. But even now, I just wanted five to help and I can still get them. We, I'm inviting organizations for a meeting. I need to send letters to them. The letters are ready. How, how will the letters be sent? So a dispatch clerk from this office must go. If there's a car, the driver will go with him. He will deliver those things. There's no car. Then I tell him, I said, I remember one time, I told this gentleman, look, kindly take this into the head of civil service and say, Chief, how do I go? And when I looked in my pocket, the money that I had couldn't take a taxi, but it could manage a no-card. I gave it to him. I said, go. You know, and since then, this is what we've been doing to make sure that off, uh, work goes on. I booked an appointment with the chief of staff, and uh, we discussed. We had a lovely discussion, and uh, they promised that they would, they would help. He said, well, they, they, they would look into it. He even referred me to the general administration to see whether they could get a vehicle for me. Yeah, but they too didn't help. The administrator has requested for money to purchase a software that can help develop an inventory of government property. Beyond the logistical and financial challenges, there is also apathy towards its work. Legislators and transition teams have abandoned them in the transition process. When I looked at the amendment law, I am not a member of the transition team. Meanwhile, um, the office is supposed to provide administrative and technical assistance to them. When they were amending it, I expected a parliamentary select committee on legislation would have said, oh, let's invite the Secretary General to have his input. No, nobody minded me. All right, so that is uh, Mr. Yaro. He is in charge of the, or he is actually the Administrator General and uh, was supposed to take charge of every state asset, know where they are, how many they are, and then also hand it over to the new government so they can also be sure that information is up to date. But where did we miss it as a country? We've been joined by an internal auditor, um, a risk management expert, and someone who over the last uh, few years has been quite active with regard to issues of auditing and, you know, we'll look at the handing over uh, also. We've been joined by Joseph Akon, and he works with us here at TV3. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, always a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much, Martin, for having me here okay. this afternoon. To start with, what is the globally accepted standard for a handing over or looking at the handing over then we we'll shift it to auditing what should have been the right steps okay once again thank you very much for having me in your studios uh, globally speaking what is expected is that when a handing over is going to be done there has to be a record of the items or properties or even documents to be uh, to be handed over now, when these documents are being prepared, um, the person to whom the items or the handing over is going to be done to is also expected to do some level of reconciliation and therefore confirm that uh, the items that are to be handed over to are intact and are okay. And if uh, a case where we have a fixed asset or properties, movable properties, then there's a need for the person to whom uh, the assets are to be handed over to, to go beyond and do what we call fiscal verification mm. to ascertain that indeed these items or properties are really in existence. So it is the standard practice is that after I receive the document, I should go a step further to ensure that one, two, three items on the list are where they are supposed to be and are there. Exactly. That is what you call the physical verification. Verification, yes. Okay. Now, let's come to the concept of 
what the role of the incoming government should be. So we know there's an administrator general, okay. and they will give the thing to him, and he will give it to us. What should the role of the, in this case, the NPP or the, the current administration, what should they have done in this role? Yes, I expected the uh, incoming government to, after they had received the report on the item that have been handed over to also do verification. In my own opinion, I think that the greater uh, responsibility lies on them because uh, merely handing over a document to you, even though it is signed, is not sufficient evidence mm. you know, to indicate that the items are even in existence or they are even in a good condition as I, I indicated in the, the in the document. Mm. So I expected them to have gone beyond that and then confirm the uh, items as they have been listed in the document one after the other and be sure of the state, the condition and as well as the existence. Do, do you think that the Auditor General saying, the Administrator General saying that he really is under-resourced, doesn't have much to work with? No. Yeah, I, I would take it from two perspectives. Uh, if it's something that he really spoke of, he said that he's under risk. Has he taken so far to mm. ensure that he gets all the needed uh, resources to work with since 2012 when the, the Transition Act came to being? You see, from that time to now, what has he done? Mm. If he has done something, that's another issue altogether. But if he has not done anything, mm. then I don't think it's right for him at this time to come out to say that uh, he's, uh, he's under risk, and for that matter, he could not execute his mandate. That's mm. professional negligence, you would have Yeah, that, that, that will amount to professional negligence. Okay, and finally, the time allocation. We are told that we have one month for the government to hand over, which they actually didn't do. But do you think that one month is enough time for a whole government to translate and give documents to one person for an incoming government? Uh, it, it, it also it depends. Uh, one month, I would say, is enough, but uh, on condition that we have the needed resources available okay. uh, to execute the mandate. So it, where we have a, uh, adequate human resource and then the other facilities are there, then I would say that it's enough. Mm. But where all these things are not there, then yeah. trust me, it's um, not an enough problem. time. All right. We've been speaking with uh, Joseph Akon. He is uh, an internal auditor and then also a risk management expert and uh, helping us understand the professional way that would have gone about this, where we have this whole issue of missing cars and governments blaming each other, previous and current. This is still Midday Live. A big thank you to you.